this time we will observe the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper is, was ordained by the Lord Jesus so that his people would remember his death until he returns. We'll spend a few minutes considering some scriptures about Jesus' death for our sins in order to prepare our hearts for communion. If you don't have a Bible, please raise your hand and a Bible will be handed to you. If you don't own a Bible, you may keep this one as a gift. Please turn in your Bible to the epistle of the Hebrews chapter 10 and we'll be looking at verses 11 through 14. This passage makes it clear that Jesus' sacrifice on the cross is the one and only sacrifice which takes away sin. And this the context surrounding this passage gives us reason that it is important for us to grasp this fact. Follow along as I read Hebrews chapter 10, verses 11 through 14. Every priest stands daily ministering and offering time after time the same sacrifice which can never take away sins. But he, that's Jesus, having offered one sacrifice for sins for all time, sat down at the right hand of God, waiting from that time onward until his enemies be made a footstool for his feet. For by one offering he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. Under the law, the priest offered many sacrifices which could not take away sin. They were symbolic. <clears throat> they pointed to a future sacrifice that really would take away sin. Each time they offered sacrifices, they were reminded of sins. In contrast, under the new covenant, Jesus offered one sacrifice which actually takes away sins. Under the law, many sacrifices were offered all the time. Under grace, one sacrifice was offered for all time. Jesus' death covered all sins of those who under the law were true believers and for all those who would come to Jesus in faith. They will never be condemned for their sins, for they are forgiven forever. God has declared them righteous by imputing the righteousness of Christ to them. That is what is meant by chapter 10, verse 14, for by one offering he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. The sanctified are per perfected forever. The sanctified are those who are set apart, are their saints. The, the, the words sanctified, holy, and saints all come from the Greek word hagios. We were given a perfect standing before God through Christ in this life with the guarantee that in the future we will have a perfect state. Now a perfect standing, then a perfect state. One of the effects of the sacrifice of Christ upon those who come to him is that it cleanses their conscience. Notice back in chapter 9, verse 9, that the sacrifices offered under the law cannot make the worshiper perfect in conscience. And then if you go down to 9.14, we read, How much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Dead works were the only kind that we could do when we were dead in trespasses and sins. Those works are worthless in the sight of God. The sacrifice of Christ delivers us from being unable to serve Christ to a good conscience in which we can serve him. Under the new covenant, our sins are forgiven through the one sacrifice of Christ. There are no more sacrifices for sin. Our maintaining a good conscience goes back to that one sacrifice. John MacArthur writes in his book, The Vanishing Conscience, when God's own verdict is not guilty and wholly righteous, how can anyone else accuse us? Who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Most important, whenever our own conscience would merci mercilessly condemn us, the blood of Christ cries for forgiveness. Christ's atonement fully satisfied the demands of God's righteousness. 
So forgiveness and mercy are guaranteed to those who receive Christ in humble, repentant faith. When we consider the awful price paid to propitiate for sins, it should cause us to abhor our sins, which put Christ on the cross. The cross shows how heinous our sins are in the sight of a holy God. When we sin, we confess it, and he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. As we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. In Hebrews 10, 26 and following, we have a warning to those who know the truth about the one sacrifice of Christ, and yet they continue on in willful sin. There no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a terrifying expectation of judgment and the fury of a fire which will consume the adversaries. What are these people like this doing? Well, they're trampling underfoot the Son of God. They're regarding the, as unclean the blood of Christ. They're insulting the spirit of grace. When they are warned, then they're warned, it's a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. This warning does not indicate that you can lose your salvation. But it is a warning lest you have never had salvation. Although the author gives this warning, he's convinced that most of his readers give evidence that they are truly saved. He ends chapter 10 with an admonition. Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what was promised. And then he ends with this statement. But we are not of those who shrink back to destruction, but of those who have faith to the preserving of the soul. If you have never come to trust the sacrifice of Jesus alone for your salvation, we ask that you not partake in the Lord's Supper. Just let the elements pass you by. But we urge you to consider your need for this one and only sacrifice for sin, which takes uh, and seek help from someone here that can point you in the way. Christian, we take part in the Lord's Supper, not as those who are sinless, but as those who are forgiven, as those who have been perfected for all time by the blood of Christ, but we continue to battle sin daily. We are confessing and repenting people who have continuing need of cleansing from sin. This morning, let's Hold the elements until all have received them, and we'll partake of the Lord's Supper together. Men, come and serve us.